So if you're someone who struggled with chord theory, I highly recommend you check out this video. I love to break these things down as simply as possible. I'm gonna start right off the bat with why chord theory is confusing. Think of the metaphor of a card game. You know, I'd show you a card and I'd say, well, this is the queen of hearts and this is the 10 of clubs and all that kind of thing. And you wouldn't really ask the person showing you the card game, well, why do we name that card what we name it? Uh, you would just pretty much accept it for what it is. Oh, that's the queen of hearts, that's the 10 of clubs, and these are the rules of the the card game. When I show people how to understand chords, we always come up with this question of why do we name it that? Why is it called that? Why is it this way? And the answer is it's kind of like a game. There isn't really a rhyme or reason. It's actually kind of arbitrary that we call things what we call them. But once you memorize the rules of the game, you're fine. But how you learn it also really helps. I have a C major seven chord. What I want you to understand about this chord is there's two types of intervals. There's major intervals and perfect intervals. That's all that a major seventh chord has. So we have a major third, we have a major seventh, but we also have these notes here and that's a perfect fifth. So major third, perfect fifth, major seventh. Now we have our starting point. I'm going to start taking notes in this chord and bringing them down a half step. I'll start with the high note right here and bring this down one half step to right here. That creates a C7 chord, which is just short for a C dominant seven chord. And so now all of a sudden we have a different idea. We have that same major third, that same perfect fifth, but then we have a minor seventh. When you stack a minor seventh onto these intervals, you get a dominant seven chord. Let's take this E now and flatten this. Now I have a C minor seven, but we still have that perfect fifth right there, right? Let's flatten that. Now we have a C minor seven flat five. Okay, interesting. So we just keep bringing things down a half step and it gives us these different chords and now we can see what they are. You might also hear people throw around the term half diminished and full diminished. Well, you know, this is a half diminished chord. It's not showing up on the screen, but that's what it is. We've basically run out of things we can flatten. If I flatten the C, that'd be flattening the, the root of the chord that would change things. So we can't really flatten that note but we can take one of the notes that we've already flattened and flatten it even more. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. So now I'm gonna take, go back to, you know, what was the first note that we flattened? It was this note, right? We went into a turn to a minor seventh. Let's take that note and let's flatten it again and bring it here. Now on the screen, it's showing a C diminished seventh. That is a full diminished chord. This is a major seventh. This is a minor seventh. If you take a minor seventh and you flatten it again, that's C double flat seven or diminished seventh. So a diminished seventh is the same thing as a major sixth. So now we go from a half diminished chord to a full diminished chord, and that's a diminished seventh chord. So there you go. We've just ran through all these chords. C major seventh, we flatten it. We get a C dominant seven. We flatten the third, we get a C minor seven, we flatten the fifth, we get a C minor seven flat five or half diminished. We flatten that seventh again, and we have a C diminished seventh or a whole diminished or full diminished chord. Really, most of the chords that you most of the time are thinking about, this gets more in depth, but this is a great starting point for anyone interested in really getting a grasp of chord theory and not letting it confuse and control them and limit them anymore. If you're looking for a great way to practice the piano using a diatonic method you can use every single day, I highly recommend checking out the video on the left. The video on the right is also really, really good for learning hand independence and scales in a way that's musical and fun. I'll see you in the next one. Have fun making music.